Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Dandelion Lesson here on Patreon and available to all through my YouTube channel and um, I make them public on Patreon, so welcome. And today I wanted to introduce a new deck that I've been um, admiring for a while and contemplating and I ordered it and it came really fast which is crazy, I mean really fast, like I ordered it two days ago and it was on my doorstep this morning. So I wanted to share it with you. And it is um, a deck created by a woman who um, made one of my favorite decks. Let me just um, lift this up a little bit. I want to lift my camera up so I have a better view. Okay. So one of my favorite decks is called The Wild Unknown. And the artist and creator of that deck is Kim Kranz. And she recently, fairly recently, maybe a year ago, came out with this deck called The Archetype Deck. And this is the beautiful box that it comes in. And when you open the box, it's got like a magnetic closure. Um, you see this message, it says, accept all, reject none. I love that. And then it has a guidebook, the Archetypes Guidebook by Kim Kranz from The Wild Unknown. It's a beautiful guidebook with lots of information in it. And then you pull out with a ribbon the second box. And this box is round, beautiful, wooden, um, beautiful paper box. And then the cards are inside. And so the cards um, represent, look at this box, so beautiful. The cards represent a collection of 73 archetypes um, that she uh, wrote about and created art for. And they're just, at, the artwork is absolutely beautiful. Like this one's called the siren. This one is called the animal, the pilgrim, the river, the Natos, which I don't know what that means, <laughs> Kairos, Alethea. I don't know what some of these mean because I, I'm just beginning to use them. The Mask, the Offering, the, po the Poet, the Shapeshifter, the Mirror. So there's all different archetypes, um, 73 of them. And you're, some of you might be wondering what an archetype is, and an archetype um, was originally, the term was coined by Carl Jung. He worked with archetypes his entire life, and what he, he was the first to sort of categorize them and talk about them in the realm of psychology and healing, right? But he did not invent them. Archetypes have always existed, and what they mean is that Archetypes are the primordial image of something that is that comes to us from the universe. We do not create it, but we materialize it. All right, so in other words, the mother is thought to be the original archetype. It is it is an image that we that comes to our mind um, when we think of certain things, right? And they've always existed. So Jung just sort of categorized them and talked about them and used them, but they've always existed. And so it, it's a big topic and it's not really for this video, um, but if you want to know about them, you could research them. And Kim has created um, quite a bit of information here um, about their qualities, um, their origin, um, let me just read to you. It's the, so archetype, the original of its kind, the first image, the inherited emerging pattern, the initial and eternal energy. And it says, um, where do archetypes come from? You can't spend much time with this question before stumbling across the work of psychologist Gustav Carl, Jung, Carl, Carl Gustav Jung. Though Jung was the first to develop and integrate the concept of archetypes into the world of psychology and healing, he would also be the first to acknowledge he had nothing to do with their origin. Even he was perplexed by the notion of their source. 
When did they begin? From what source do they originate? What are their intentions? Enchanted by these unanswerable questions, Jung devoted his life's work to studying archetypes within his patients, himself, and the world. First, he called them primordial images, a term that suggests that they come from the beginning beyond the beginning. It also implies that they are related to images and the imagination. Soon, though, Jung landed on the word archetype, and it stuck. And then it says, the name itself implies that these energies have been swirling since the beginning of time and are inherent in our very existence. They cannot be suppressed, denied, hidden, gotten rid of, or fixed, no matter how hard we try. We inherit them for the, through the very universe, and they express themselves through us. They belong. So it talks about how archetypes are patterns. <laughs> um, and I like this, this territory. This is really important to me. Throughout this book, you will hear me speak of the imaginal. What does it mean? Where is it? Though these questions defy answering the simplest way to put it is that the imaginal is the realm of poetry, images, metaphor, and the imagination. It is the deep mystery where everything is possible. Please note it is the imaginal, not the imaginary. The latter term implies it is not real, but the existence of the imaginal, however, is quite palpable here on earth. When the two worlds collide, they take the form of chills while hearing a poem or song, a tear that rolls down the cheek when you least expect it, a synchronicity that confounds explanation, a night sky that is beyond comprehension or description. The imaginal is where the archetypes roam, waiting for us to visit them. And she goes on to talk about the qualities of them and the intentions of them and all different things, right? It's really fascinating. So if you're interested, I suggest doing some research or even purchasing this deck, you know, eventually, if it's something you want to work with. To me, um, archetypes, archetypes are the realm of mystery to me. They are the numinous and um, they richly inhabit the imaginal world that I like to visit sometimes. And so today I drew a card from this deck to share with you. And I drew the card, the seed. And immediately, I mean, it's obviously the beginning of the beginning, right? The seed. And you see this pearl in the center of these concentric rings. It's a really graphic image that, that tells us a lot about its meaning. But I wanted to read to you what Kim says about the seed. So let's find it here. It is under the tools. And it's on page 197. The seed. The beginning, the origin, the pearl. Beginnings come in many forms. They are not always a beautiful seed placed intentionally in nourishing soil. Origin stories, like any birth story, are complex, surprising, multi-layered and usually reveal a central image or detail that represents the fully formed being. Simply stated, the end is present in the, in the beginning or the entire oak tree resides within the acorn. Whether you follow this imaginal theory or not, know that when this card appears, there is potent generative energy all around. It stirs your very insides and usually results in an antsy and patient feeling Pay particular attention to what agitates you, as it is a sure sign of growth to come. You are bumping up against a growth edge. It is from the grit that the pearl eventually comes to be. Over here it says, one of the alchemist's favorite images was the pearl. The irritant, over time, becomes the treasure. What is your grit? That's a really important thing to think about with our creative practice. One time I heard a voice tell me, be the irritant in his oyster. I've never forgotten it. And um, I think about that with my own work sometimes. What is it that stirs me to create something or to want to say something? What is that origin? Where? What is the irritant in me that causes me to want to say something, right? Mm -hmm. The true seed is elusive. If we follow any story toward its origin, it spirals farther and farther back in time. 
In this way, we are always the seed and always the fruit it bears. That's a heavy thought, <laughs> right? It's, it's something that you have to think about yourself, right? And then at the, at the, for each card, she talks about when, when we're dealing with it in its light form and when it, we're dealing with it in its dark form. And she says about the seed, when light, it is generative, fertile, germinating, and building. And when dark, it is festering, stewing, and dormant. Okay, so we have both of those things within our creative practice. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then she says, go deeper, Jane Hillman, James Hillman's acorn theory and the soul's code. So you could look that up and see what that means. And I haven't done that, but I will later for my own benefit. So James Hillman's acorn theory and the soul's code. You could Google that and see where it leads you. A lot of times cards like this do lead me to start sort of a, a search and, and I call it following the wormhole, right? To see where it takes me. So this card, um, when I think about it with the creative practice, it's really about the word, what is our why? Why do we want to create? Why do we want to paint certain things? Why do we want to draw certain things? I think of myself and, and one of the things that I like to draw most often are fields or paint them. I am enamored by fields um, in every stage of their of their life through all seasons. They call to me and I paint them and draw them often. I even draw the grasses, individual grasses or flowers or insects or butterflies. Um, it's such uh, an archetypal image for me personally and fields have a lot to do with life cycles and birth and death and and um, abundance and fertility and creativity and diversity. So those are, are things that I think about when I'm drawing or painting fields. These are important questions that we have to ask ourselves. What is our seed? What is it that gives us our why? Why do we want to show up to a creative practice? What is it that our soul is aching to say? or to discover, or to contemplate, right? What is that mystery within us? And it's different for each of us, right? It's different for each of us. So today, I wanna to focus on that for my painting. I, I want to paint something reminiscent of this pearl in the center and how that's going to look. And I'm gonna use a watercolor, but I might introduce some ink or pencil um, we'll see, but I like the circle and I like beginning with the pearl.
So I thought for a moment um, that I might want to add some mark making on this. I have a gold gel pen that I thought about creating some concentric lines. But the more I looked at this, the more I felt like it was perfect um, for what I was feeling, just the way it is. I love the, the luminous um, transparent colors here. I love that they're all very full of light. They're um, indicative of the field colors that I love so much. I love the way um, the paint pushed out one after another and sort of blended magically in between. I love how the glitter that I used created these very subtle lines down here at the bottom. They're, I don't know if you can see them, but there's almost like stardust surrounding it. It's so, so um, subtle. And at the end, I'll put a little video of just this painting held up into the light so you can see it. So I'm going to leave it as it is, but when you make yours, um, you take it as far as you want. You know, if you feel like putting um, some graphite or ink work onto yours, please do it. Don't, you know, don't stop until you feel like stopping. I'm going to go ahead and add my chop right here and then if I wanted to and this is dry I could add some words um, if I felt like it you know down here at the bottom of the paper but quite honestly I feel like it says everything I needed to say um, so yeah think about think about this image of of the pearl within all of the concentric circles, all of the ripples of your life, and what it is that is at your very center, that that makes you special, that makes you unique, that the images that call to you over and over again, what are those images? What are those imaginal um, images and archetypes that, um, propel you to create, that that are a catalyst to you in your creative practice. And this work sometimes doesn't come um, right away. Sometimes it takes some time, some exploring, and maybe do some research into archetypes and, and get a list of archetypes that are meaningful to you and start exploring those. There are so many people who have written about them, um, many, many books. I know Carolyn Meese has written about them a lot. Um, and, and certainly the direct writings from Jung are very helpful. Um, and I have read them at different points of my life. So really, really special to think about this, um, this archetype of the seed and that question of why. What is our why? So in contrast to the why in our creative practice is the how, right? The how is how we get paint on paper and how we draw and learning those techniques and learning about our tools. That is all the how. And the how is something that we share in common. Um, we all, you know, sort of approach our painting with the same tools, right? And the same techniques, basically. But the why is what makes our expression unique, what, what, what makes our expression individual. The, the why that causes us to show up to our work and what it is that we want to say. All right, I hope that makes sense. It's a lot to think about. It's kind of a heavy subject, but I think it's a worthwhile one um, for all of us as we um, explore our creativity. All right, everybody, that's it for today. I'm going to make a little video of this sparkle so you can see that. And otherwise, um, for my patrons, I will see you um, either tomorrow or Friday with our last lesson in the Crocus Project. Okay, I hope you are all very well. Be safe. Take care.